Hello, my name is Steve Haley. I'm a GIS analyst with American Forest, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the ways that we use GIS to accomplish our work here at the, the American Forest Organization. In general, there has been a loss of canopy in, in large city areas, or small city areas for that matter, throughout the United States. And a lot of the communities that contract with us to do these kinds of analyses, what they're looking for is data from which they can develop policy. What we do is we take a land cover analysis. If you take those trees away, this would be the additional rainfall runoff that would occur that you would otherwise need to accommodate given re your rainfall re retention facilities and so forth, and this would cost your community this much to do that. This is a typical city green report that comes out, and as you can see, it presents you a pie chart. It will give you the land cover analysis. These are acres. These are percentage of the total area. Uh, this is the total tree canopy, 4.9 acres, 33.5. You'll see it's the same as it is up here where it says trees. Uh, air pollution removal, you see it talks about carbon dioxide, ozone, nitrogen dioxide, particulate matter, and sulfur, sulfur dioxide. It's giving you the pounds removed per year. It's also giving you the dollar value of that. We get into another activity that Ken gets into with remote sensing. He's our kind of our remote, remote sensing uh, specialist, which, which is a field that takes for the most part, or a large part, satellite imagery, for example. And he can do something known as change detection, which we do a lot. Like Steve, I work with maps. Uh, for me, I mostly work with the remote sensing portion, uh, which is viewing the Earth from space or from planes and uh, taking pictures of it. This is just one example of viewing change with the Landsat data. This is New Mexico. Here are two dates. Between uh, 1998 and last year, this is, how much, this is how much this area has changed. And so these are two separate dates. And when you flicker them back and forth, you can see the change. New Mexico's seen a lot of growth in the last decade. So when you zoom in, you can see like the housing in the city just growing. And for instance, we'll zoom in right here in the northwest section of the city. You can see the old date, how this was all fields here. And now there's all these houses and businesses and it's developing and moving up the mountainside here. We also have high resolution data sets and I can show you the difference between those two also. So this is high resolution and this is low low resolution data sets. You use them for different things. With a low res you generally look at larger places, larger portions where you can look at whole states and things with the lower resolution. With the high resolutions you generally just focus in on one spot. And we can look at large areas with that raster analysis and we can take a year, a Landsat for example, in 2001 and then we can overlay a Landsat image from 2006 or whatever uh, and we can uh, detect a change in forest cover between those two areas or any other land cover and identify problems is basically what we're getting at. It's a great field to become involved in, it's a new field that we, and there's a large demand, a high demand for people that are well versed and qualified and skilled in GIS analysis. It's a, it's a burgeoning field. All of the federal agencies pretty much uh, to one degree or another are involved in GIS for the, to, to accomplish their different missions and, it, and it, they accumulate a lot of spatial data that they then make available to the general public, a lot of it for free and you can go up there and grab uh, that data and it's already geo-referenced in most cases and bring it right down. USGS is a, is a very popular uh, site that I like to go to to get all kinds of data. National Atlas is another site where there's all kinds of information available, spatially referenced available information that you can just download and start, look, start using. By having GIS, I'm able to do things certainly a lot faster than I could otherwise do them. I mean, and, and certainly a lot more effectively. I think, you know, it's the old adage, a picture says a thousand words. I can produce all the reports in the world with a bunch of tables that, that basically are telling you we need to have more trees in urbanized areas. And then I can produce you a map or a report based on GIS that says, you know, because if you ever lost the amount of trees that you have, you would have this much more wastewater to deal with. Uh, you know, at this much of a cost, and, and, and you would have this more, much more pollutants in the air and so forth. And I think it's a great field, I love it, and as one friend of mine said, I don't have a job, I have a paid hobby, and that's how I look at it. Uh, but what I would recommend is any chance that you have to get uh, involved into a GIS class or something that gets into spatial analysts, 
uh, or, or spatial reference kind of things, uh, I, would, I would jump into it. Give it a chance and see if you like it. You can learn more about the American Forests Organization by visiting their website, www.americanforests.org.